and you just kind of move with it yeah. and just kind of go with it and stuff. But if you've been around Daytona and you go with the waves, it starts getting harder and harder. And then when the storms come, you get rapid, constant beating of the waves where they're no longer just comfortable. They're hurting your body. They're hurting you. And it throws you down on the ground and everything. And as I was watching it, everybody's running for higher ground. People trying to get out of the way of it because it was getting rougher and rougher. And then, the, like a voice, a guy said, you know how to ride it. You know how to ride the wave. Ooh. And I said, I'm not sure how to ride this wave because it was getting so hard and rough on you. He goes, no, you know how to boogie board, you know how to body surf, you know this stuff. Ride it. Go with it. Don't sit there and try to fight it or stand in place. Go with it. And it was funny because one of my friends I was thinking about him. Now I go out front and here he is walking up and I start walking towards him. He goes, I got a word for you. Isaiah 55 11. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> and it was great on how Everything was coming. Then I started watching and listening to this stuff, and it was like, "Don't let the don't let the devil take your joy." That's right. If you open the door, the problem is he's going to put his foot in that door. What you say behind closed doors, what you say in your car, what happens comes out. But the problem is, he knows what you say. He can't probably read your mind, but he knows exactly what you're <clears throat> thinking. He knows where to grab your past. He knows what to grab hold of in your past and what triggers everything you do. Mm -hmm. So it's like, no, we got to have that joy yeah. back into us. And it's funny because... My wife found joy when she thought I was an apple and bit my head. <laughs> oh, that's right, this week. That's this week. <laughs> it broke, and she started laughing, and we started having cheer and stuff. And then I had the blessing of watching dogs that helped me get my mind up off of everything. Mm -hmm. Because what's bad is that. Not even before this month is over with, a couple months, we got one person on heroin, one committed suicide, we got people happening across the street that, that OD. It's like we have death that drops around us, and it's hard to get that joy. It's very hard. So instead of grabbing and going with it and just going down with the depression, we got to ride it out. Especially when it hurts. Mm -hmm. Jesus. And that was it. Amen. That's awesome. Yeah. Jesus. Facebook land. Woo. <laughs> um, so last week, um, Liberty from Spirit Move Ministries, she was in Washington, D.C. on Saturday, the 13th. And the week prior to that, I felt the Lord directed my husband and I to go, to go there. She was going to do a prayer summit at the Washington Monument and gather as many people as she could together to pray. And I really felt the Lord compelling me to do that. And so we planned it, took the trip, went out there to D.C. Um, I had never been to D.C. before, so I really didn't know what to expect. Um, I will tell you, the, the heaviness in the atmosphere mm. of the delusion and the deception and the manipulation that's there is so thick. Mm. I can't even begin to describe to you the feeling. Um trying to press through in things spiritually in that 
state area, whatever you want to call it, um, it it's, it's hard. It's very hard. And uh, so I've grown up in the church my whole life. I've grown up in the, in the charismatic Pentecostal movement. I've been around mighty warriors for the Lord, intercessors, people who, people who do spiritual warfare on a regular basis. I'm here to tell you now, the spiritual warfare that we did in the 80s and the 90s is not the same spirit way we're going to do spiritual warfare coming up. I'm telling you right now, God's already telling me that he's changing that, shifting it. There's, It's going to be a different way, a strategic way of doing things. One of the things that Kathy spoke to me right before we went to D.C., um, she had a meeting here, and she prayed over me, and the thing that God used her to whisper in my ear was stealth mode, remain in stealth yes. mode. And as soon as I stepped off that plane into that uh, D.C. airport, instantly I could, it was like the Holy Spirit right there with me said, get in stealth, get in stealth mode. And I could feel it in my spirit, and I was like, God, what exactly does that mean? You know, like, what are you saying to me? What exactly is stealth mode? And um, I'm going to share this with you because I really believe this word is for everyone. This is not just for me. This is what he spoke to me in my prayer time yesterday. And this is what he said to me about what he's calling his body to. He said, I have called you to be set apart. I have not called you to fit in. You are not called to fit in with the crowd. It is time to step out. I have strategic assignments for each and every one of you. One of stealth mode. Stealth mode means to be in a temporary state of secretiveness, usually undertaken to avoid alerting the enemy around you, to become less visible on the radar, to be camouflaged, to be able to go in, secretly blend in, go in, conquer, do what you're called to do, and come out without the enemy even detecting you. <laughs> That is what stealth mode is. That is what God told me he's calling his body to do. He is strategically taking us and placing us and positioning us in different places, different nations, different countries, different states. He's positioning us. He's going to, he's going to strategically give you assignments. He's going to send you and tell you what to do, and you're going to go out. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to tell you the truth. When I left D.C. and I got on the plane to come back, I thought to myself, God, did I even do anything? Did I even make a difference? Because I did not do spiritual warfare the way I had ever done it before in my life or what I've ever seen growing up. And he says, it's not about how you do it. It's the authority that you go in that's inside of you. Right. Amen. And so I was like, wow, God. I mean, I was crying on the plane home because I really thought I missed it, guys. I really did. And God is like, no, you did exactly what I told you to do. And that's all you're supposed to do. You're not supposed to go over and beyond and do all this crazy mm -hmm. stuff. You do exactly what I tell you. You be strategic. You be a sharpshooter, not a gunslinger. Mm -hmm. The gunslinging days are over. He said it's time to be a pointed sharpshooter and hit the target. Mm -hmm. So we went to the White House. The first thing we started doing, my God gave this to my husband. He said, I want you to anoint your feet. Well, first of all, he told me to carry anointing oil with me, so I carried my anointing oil. It's called holy ground, holy ground anointing oil, talking about, you know, you are now standing on holy ground. And so we anointed our feet, and we walked the two-acre perimeter of the White House. The first day we got there, we just walked around and scoped out everything. We looked. We didn't do anything in the spirit until God was showing us things. Then we get there, and we start, you know, the next day we start walking around the two-acre plot of the White House, Okay. We prayed as the Lord directed us to. I specifically saw to place up four pillars on each corner post of the White House. Ooh, she could have I feel the Holy Ghost. Man, he says, I want you to place a pillar of righteousness. I want you to place the pillar of truth. And that all hidden agendas be revealed. He, want you, he said, I want you to place a pillar of holiness with reverential fear for my name. And I want you to place a pillar of unity in this nation. Mm. Jesus. So Amen. that's exactly what we did. On each corner post, I prayed exactly as God told me. And I didn't get out there shouting and screaming and acting crazy. I just strategically walked. And I placed each corner post with my hand and with my voice authoritatively as the Lord spoke to me to do it. And it was like instantly I could feel angelic anointing. I'm telling you, I could feel angels coming down. And I could see these angels on each corner post in my vi in my vision. I could see this, and I felt like God was saying, "What well, you're placing is standing right now, right here." Mm -hmm. And I prayed that God would raise up righteous leaders in the land. 
And I'll tell you, Satan tried to stop our assignment. Whew, he sure did. Because there is secret service everywhere out there. They are they are all over the streets. You don't even see regular police. It's literally guys dressed in black, armored, says secret service across them. They're everywhere. Okay. So as soon as we got ready to start our assignment, Satan was trying to stop it. For about two hours, they did a lockdown around the main gate and fence going into the White House. But little did he know he was too late, for we had already started right at that very entrance gate. God told me, anoint my hands with oil and lay my hand on the, on the front gates of the White House. And I prayed and prayed everything he told me at that front gate, touched it, anointed it before the Secret Service could shut the block down. As we continued to walk, we kept going, and they didn't even, it was like every step we took, they were a step behind us and shutting down each corner. Wow. <laughs> we got up there and all the way around before they were completely shutting it down. By the time we got back around the main gate, there was nobody in front of the main gate. And they were all, people were gone and the secret services were lined up and they were like, you can't come through here for two hours. We're like, hey, we're good. Our assignment's done. We did what God told us to do. Wow. We did everything he told us to do. And we did that every single day. We went wow. around and prayed as God showed us every single day. Just anointing, praying. Praying for the people. Oh my gosh, I had such a heaviness and burden for the people in D.C. I, I'm, I'm like, God, I don't even know how they're doing it. Because when you come here, you can, you instantly feel you can press into the glory here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's it's heavy. you got to really push mm -hmm. through to even feel a sense of the Lord there in that place. Which because it's so, the, the yes. atmosphere is so thick with the enemy. Um, but we prevailed. Thank you, God. You, you yes. prevailed in that land. Uh, we did go to um, the Washington Monument on that Saturday at 2 o'clock. Uh, Liberty started her event at 3 because so much was coming against her and everything else that they were doing there. They got moved like two different times from their locations of where they were sit seated. And so um, they so lots was coming against them with that. The worship and everything was coming against them. It was really crazy. And um, But we worshipped. We worshipped. They prayed. They had um, strategic... Um, assignments that they felt to pray over. They had a list of things. They prayed over our education system. They prayed over the judicial system. They prayed. They prayed for um, you know presidential administrations. Prayed for things to be revealed, things to come out that need to come out. Uh -huh. They prayed how God told them to pray. We all prayed in agreement together. And it's it is funny because there might have been maybe fifty people that showed up to this, but you know it's like God said to me, you know the the guard the um the army of Gideon, they went from three thousand to three hundred. He said, don't worry about the numbers. It's not about the numbers. Right. You know, he started the church with 12. You know, it's not about the numbers. So um, that, that, that's what we did on Saturday. Okay, and then on Sunday, I'll tell you the scripture that God gave me. Um, there's another strategic thing that he told me to do. I'm not at liberty to share that yet. He has not told me to share because of the specific building that we went to. I will share that in private. Um but the scripture that he gave me to proclaim at this one specific location was Isaiah 10, 1 and 2. What sorrow awaits the unjust judges and those who issue unfair laws, for they deprive the poor of justice and deny the rights of the needy among the people. They prey on widows and take advantage of the orphans. And he said, that is coming down. Amen. That is coming down. He had me declare and decree that word in this location. I do want to tell you this much about it. When we first started walking to this specific location, it's a mile outside of the White House. It took us a 40-minute walk to get there. I'm telling you, it felt like we were never going to get there. All hell was trying to stop us from getting to that location. When we finally made it there and on our way back, Literally in 10 minutes, we walked all the way back to the same spot we started. You tell me how that so, happened. Mm -hmm. I looked at my watch. I'm like, this is crazy. Like, wow, this is insane. Mm -hmm. The enemy is really coming at us with this. But thank you, Jesus. He's in control. He's in charge, not the enemy. Mm -hmm. And this is the yes. word that the Lord gave me. And he says, I need my people to hold the line. I need my people to hold the line, and I need you to pull the line. I'm going to explain the two. He says, you remember that game, Red Rover, Red Rover, we played when we were kids, and you would hold the line, and you would hold your hands really taut and tight, mm -hmm. right? And you didn't let anyone come through and break through your side, right? So he says, I need my people to hold the line, stay tight, stay united. To hold the line means to maintain the existing position, do not yield to the pressure of the difficult situations, which is what you just said, Earl, about uh -huh. riding the wave. 
He said, a line of soldiers was standing in attack without leaving their positions. I cannot stress this enough. He says, my people are abandoning their posts. Mm -hmm. He says, do not abandon your post. I've placed you in a watchtower. Stand in your post. And then he told me, you got to pull that line. you got to hold it, and you got to pull it really tight. Pulling it to draw near, to tug with force, the act of setting that boundary. We've got to set that boundary line, and we've got to move in what God is calling us to move in. And that's exactly what we did while we were there. We strategically placed the things he told us to place. At one point, I said, God, do you want us to tear anything down right now? Any kind of mantles? He said, I don't want you tearing nothing down at this moment. He said, because what I am allowing to happen is for my glory. It is for yes. my return of my son. So, yes, we are <laughs> placing things where it's supposed to be. But a, a lot of this is God is allowing these things to happen for a reason. Yeah. So I just really felt that in my spirit. I was excited about being able to share this with you. And I just, I, I pray that you will just hold the line, get in unity with other brothers and sisters that are on board, and just hold the line together, stay, stay unified, stay strong, and do not abandon your post. Amen. Right? Okay, all right, and we're going to pray then. Father God, right now, Lord Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for this word going forth, Father. I pray that you will just continue to open up the eyes of your people, Lord God, that they will pray strategically the things that you are calling them to pray, Father God. I pray that they will become sharp shooters, Father God, in the spiritual realm, that they will be those precise arrows being launched out into the atmosphere, that your words will penetrate the darkness, Father God, that each and every person hearing this right now, Father, will open up their heart, open up their spiritual ears, their spiritual eyes, to see and hear what you're saying right now, Father God. I thank you, Jesus, that you are moving, Father. I thank you, God, that you are moving in our yes. nation and that you are moving in Washington, D.C., yes, Father yes, God. And it is yes, going to flow yes. out from to yes. every other state in this nation, Father. I thank you, God, for yes. what you're doing, Lord yes. Jesus. We thank you for that assignment, that it will be completed, it will be finished. And I thank you, God, for all the strategic assignments going out forth from this place right now, Father, from each and every person hearing this right now, Lord God, that we know that we have an assignment. We thank you, God, that we're going to walk in it, Lord God. We're going to walk in it to completion because we are not getting tied up in the affairs of the civilian life because we are soldiers. We are recruited for you, Father God, and for your glory, and we will fulfill what you have called us to do, Lord. I thank you, Jesus, that we are going to ride the wave, Lord God, and we're going to take it with us, Father. We're going to do exactly what you're calling us to do. We're not going to let this depression get us down, and we're going to walk in the joy of the Lord because the joy of the Lord is our strength, Father. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Woo!